You're watching the free version of Mocha Essentials. Follow along with projects and footage with a premium download available at borisfx.com. Welcome back to exercise 10, the basics of Roto continued. And here is where we've left off. So what I've done is I've gone in and just, you know, polished up this uh, right hand and done the left hand. So we're moving in quite nicely now. For this next section, we're going to be looking at just rotoing the main bit of the body. So not the arms, the arms are going to come later. I'm just thinking about the main body itself. And this is both more simple and also a little bit trickier than you might think it's going to be. Because if we have a little look at the, uh, the body in the bottom left hand corner, as this moves along, it's going to get completely covered by the arm. And there's, there's a little bit of movement to it, but we're also going to be fighting against the movement of the camera. So here's what we're going to do instead. We're going to do something similar to what we did in the previous uh, exercise, and we're going to create a track that we're going to link our other shapes to, our roto shapes to, to make it easier to get the uh, exact roto splines. But we're not going to make a shape that is directly attached to the body. We're going to do a sort of overall track that just gets the, um, the movement of the camera so that we can take that out of the equation. So I'm going to come up to my X spline tool and I'm just going to choose something around about here because this area is pretty much coplanar with where our girl is sat. The reason I know that is because it's the only bit that's in focus. Everything else is out of focus, which leads me to believe that these are in the same focal plane. So let's come in. I'm just going to call this one a uh, background track. Make it simple for ourselves and keep the same naming convention. And I'm going to turn off uh, skew. So we're just going to be tracking in translation, scale, and rotation. And let's quickly track that forwards. Excellent. That was nice and easy. So let's come in and do our stabilized trick again. And let's just check to make sure that is stable. There we go. So we can now see we've, we've successfully neutralized out that sort of small amount of camera wobble. So we're only focused on the movement of the girl now. All right, excellent. So let's move our background track into our tracks group. There we go, and that will then also hide its visibility because that group has its visibility hidden and I'm going to make a new spline shape. Just hold out X just to pan around and let's start off screen and swoop our way up. Now, because we're going to roto the shoulder uh, as a separate thing, I don't need to be 100% accurate on the, uh, the outline of the shoulder, but I'm going to try to guess where the rest of the dress is. And the same on this side, I'm going to come in and I am going to be accurate on this side of the dress because her arm goes down at some point and that means we're going to need a nice edge over here. Right click on a handle and make that all nice and smooth. And then we're ready to do the, uh, the actual work. Okay, let's give this a good name. We're going to call this one dress mask. And I'm going to come down to my linked track and I'm going to link this one to our background track. So now I can focus all of the efforts. You can see that the, the background is, is completely stable. And I can focus all of our efforts just on the girl's movement. So when we're doing this sort of road scoping, we want to make things easy for ourselves. And that means canceling out as much movement as possible. So if we can get a good roto on the main shapes, like we've done with the arms, fantastic. If we can't, then we need to neutralize as much movement as we possibly can. And in this case, it's the camera movement. So now I can come in and do that general work. So this is my good frame. Come in, find the point where it changes the most, and then work big to small. So bring that in here. And actually that lines up pretty nicely. I'm going to turn off overlays again. So I can zoom in and maybe make a few minor corrections here. Because the dress obviously has 
change shape just a, a little bit uh, when she's when she's moved. And over on this side, I don't need to worry too much about this at the moment because all of this extra stuff is going to be taken up by the arm. So we just need to be aware of it. And I'm probably going to have to add in another point somewhere around there. But I'm not going to worry about it too much now. And go to the next point where it's everything's drifting away. And we'll move that back in. Work big to small again. And again, not worried at all about the right hand side until that arm comes down. So let's check that out. It's looking good. Find the point where it falls away the most, which is going to be here. It's our last frame where we can see the dress. Move it over, control or command, just distort that in, check the edge. And here, because I know that the arm is about to fall out any second now, I will actually come in and make this one as nice as I can. Not 100%, but just so that we, we have the, the basic shape so that when this does eventually animate out, which is going to in just a moment, that we've got a good starting point for the rest of the animation. So it's going to animate in nice and cleanly. So you can see there. Before that changes direction one more time and this time because we can't really see anything that's going on the uh going on on the left hand side we're going to use our right hand side as the the main reference for this so we start off getting that into place bring it in there there we go and now i can start working smaller again Bring that over there. I want to avoid adding more points if I possibly can. If we're getting pixel perfect, you know, this section here needs uh, another couple of points. And I might just tighten up that there. I think we can we can get away with this just for uh, just for now. Let's bring that in there. There we go. We make sure that's looking nice and consistent, and it is. And we move forward to the final frame, move that into place. And again, just hold down that control key just to distort that in work big to small. Don't care too much about this because we're going to fill this in with the arm. I'm going to keep saying that because it's, it's one of those things that's really important to, um, to actually understand because you don't have to be pixel perfect across the entire shape if you're going to fill in the rest of the gaps anyway. Let's take a little look at that. That's looking all right so far. Okay, good. Right, so up till now, I've been using the uh, the drop down menus to kind of do things like stabilize and to turn the, the mats on and off. I want to show you another way of exposing that functionality in the Essentials workspace. So if I come up to the top here and right click, it's going to give a drop down of different windows that we can open or close. And you can see here we've got the basic tools. So remember, we've used the advanced tools before to bring up some of these extra tools we've uh, we've used. This is a way of simply expanding out our workspace to, to kind of customize it a little bit. So if we want more stuff than we've got just in the essentials, but we don't want all of the extra windows that come in with something like the classic workspace, we can choose what we're doing down here. And this is good to pop on most of the, the tools that you're gonna uh, work with. But if we want to expand out those a little bit more, we can always come to view. And we have a lot of the same controls down here as we've seen before, but we also have things like view controls. So if I turn on view controls here, we get another little toolbar coming down underneath. And this is something that, comes in automatically in the classic mode, but is very useful when we're, we're doing uh, rotoscoping in essentials. Because what this allows us to do is it allows us to come in and quickly 
turn on our mat overlays. You can see with this third button here, we can choose whether we're just looking at uh, selected mats, selected track mats, or all mats. And we can choose whether we're looking at a alpha view or the color overlay. And with this twirl, we can choose how heavy the color overlay is. Choose the opacity of it, I should say. It's at 0.5, which is where it starts. But what I can also do is I can turn off some of the other overlays using these buttons here. So we can turn off our outlines. If I have one of my layers selected, I can turn off the handles up and down here. If we, we skip over a couple, we can have a look at this button here, which looks like a uh, hand holding something steady because this is the stabilize button. So this stabilizes the viewer up. If we turn that off, we get the unstabilized view. Let's turn off our overlays again. And this is our wobbly, our wobbly camera view. And we can just check to see how things are looking in our wobbly camera. And with my outlines off, I can see that I've, I've maybe have a couple of things that I need to change if I want to make this pixel perfect over on this side. So that can be difficult to see when we have our outlines turned on. I'm not gonna to worry too much about that for now. Let's uh, turn this on here. Let's just make sure that everything is pretty good. Anyway, I do think I might actually need to add another uh, keyframe in here. Any sort of small thing that we've got, like pixel thing here, I'm not gonna to worry too much about it right now because we are gonna add a bit of edge softness later and that's gonna take off some of that harshness. But where things are slipping, which I can see here, I will actually, you know, obviously go in and change it. So I'll turn my outlines back on at the top. I'll turn my overlays back off over here and come in, turn my transform box back on again. Lovely. So zoom this back to fit. Excellent. All right. So uh, if I'm happy with this workspace, I like how this workspace is now, I can save this as my own custom workspace. So I'm going to go save current as, and I'm going to go this uh, Ben Roto. There we go. And now let's just close that in. And now Ben Roto pops in in my drop down. So we come to the classic too much if i go to essentials that's maybe too little for what i want right now but if i go to ben roto ah absolutely perfect we've looked at stabilizing out the camera movement to make our general road scoping a lot easier and we've also looked at creating our custom workspace as well in the next exercise we're going to come in and start to fill in the gaps a little bit more so we're going to be looking at the arm over here and I'm going to be showing you something that you can only do in Mocha Pro. And that's going to be just a very brief look at Power Mesh to help our road scoping. So I'll see you in the next part. You've been watching the free version of Mocha Essentials. To download all videos, projects, and footage, purchase the premium version available at borisfx.com.